I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Shelby County Board of Education, January 26, 2023. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now that brings us to item B. Do I hear a motion to approve so moved. the presented agenda? Second. Approved by Mr. Phillips, second by Ms. Jackson. Next is reg recognitions and presentations. Hello everyone, my name is Cindy Cheney. I'm the Public Relations Coordinator for Shelby County Public Schools. And tonight, we'd like to start our recognitions with the President of the Shelby County Education Association, Ms. Talia Ellis. Good evening everyone, it's so good to see everyone out on this cool Kentucky night. Just wanted to say that we, board members, we do appreciate you. We know all the hard work you do each and every day. And thank you for making this district so transparent with the needs that we you know, need for our students, our teachers, and our community. Your SEEA, Shelby County Education Association members, would like to present you with a gift from Buck City Soap, a um, t-shirt from KEA, and a pencil to know who we are. If ever you need anything, please call on us and we'll be right there to help you um, do what needs to be done for the students of Shelby County, Kentucky. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So as Ms. Ellis is giving out the gifts from Shelby County Education Association, I would like to announce that it is um, Kentucky School Board um, Month, Appreciation Month. and. Um, if you look up there, they're getting lots of gifts tonight. Simpsonville Bobcats have given them a water bottle. And um, I'd just like to, to say a few words about um, School Board Recognition Month. So as we observe School Board Recognition Month in January here in Shelby County, we're glad that you all could join our celebration. If you didn't get a cupcake or some punch, um, make sure you do. And um, our board member, Anna Friel, Sonia Blackburn, Andrew Klein, Brenda Jackson, um, and Alan Phillips are among the more than 850 school board members in the state's 171 local school districts that are being recognized this month for their service. Moreover, Shelby County Public Schools was recently featured in the Kentucky School Board Association's um, monthly magazine because we are one of the few school districts who recognize student voice with our student representatives, Ms. Perry Allen and Ms. Abigail Quinn. And we think that's kind of cool. Um, this is the perfect time to thank school board members for serving a role that has become increasingly complex. Um, members of the Shelby County Public School Board of Education are elected to shoulder important district decisions and to ensure success for all students. Among other responsibilities, the local board oversees an $88 million budget here in Shelby County. They adopt policies based on ever-changing education laws and they closely monitor the strategic direction of the school system. All of this while they have to complete professional learning and state mandated training. Who's ahead right now? You all always have a competition going. Oh, no, we're all zero today. Oh, are you? Yeah, okay. Until the end of February. Okay, well, I can't wait to hear the latest update. They compete on who gets their hours <laughs> in first. Um, our dedicated board team here in front of you tonight works to give every child in Shelby County, in every classroom in Shelby County, um, access to high quality teaching and learning. And even in the face of new challenges that we face every night that we have a board meeting, um, such as rising cost, nationwide staffing shortages, uh, we can look to Shelby County Schools school board members to help us, and they don't flinch. They do what's necessary for our district, and they always have students first in mind. 
Um, our community should be very proud of our board members who sit before you tonight. Um, we want to thank our schools who have provided some banners that you see around, um, around the room and uh, the, the special gifts that were given to our board members from our schools. And um, if you can, if you have a little thank you to shout out, um, just use the hashtag LoveKYSchoolBoards. And uh, if you have a special uh, shout out to one of our board members, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Um, we have one more thing to share with our board members, and it is from Southside Elementary. The students, the Tigers of Southside, made a video for you. So, uh -huh. Mr. Hebner, if you would roll tape. That's really an old saying. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> They make decisions so we can learn and get a great education. I think the board members help us get good teachers and computers so I, so I can learn more. I think that they give us all the stuff that we need to learn. And I remember that while you're school, um, there was a bunch of stuff. So I think that they made that stuff for us where so we can have a fun day. The school, the school board helps us like do things that like it helps us with activities like Southside Singers or Odyssey of the Mind and um, all other activities and um, it, and also they allow us to like um, get the stuff we need so like if we had a field trip or something the, um, the school board could um, get us the trip so we um, so we can have so we can actually have a field trip the and the school board helps us helps us like it sets the calendar calendars and like it helps us have snow days so like we can stay safe they build schools for you and also they um they for us to learn <coughs> um the school builders um build build headphones for us to learn and listen for computers they make computers so we can learn stuff like my sisters and Dreambox and Lexia. They help us by getting um, all of the school supplies and just we need it. We need to learn more and, and learn more about English. They buy all, all of our supplies that we need so we can get great education and they protect the school as much as they can. Um, the school board helps us have great and kind workers at our schools and kind teachers. And I think they help teachers become better teachers so they can prepare us for a successful life. I think they give us things like extracurricular activities like Odyssey of Mind and um, Southside Singers and a lot of after school activities and things like PE and music and art. have a certificate for you usually you're in the background of the pictures but you are the picture tonight so if you would come forward we'll start with our student representatives and pal Miller is going to help me um, this is miss Perry Allen and do you know that the drill go line up in front there <laughs> miss Abigail Quinn <laughs> Mm 
<laughs> Miss Brenda Jackson. Mr. Alan Phillips. Miss Sonia Blackburn. Miss Joanna Friels and Mr. Andrew Klein. And I think the video showed us um, who they keep in mind when they make the decisions that they make at our um, bi-monthly meeting. So Dr. Sugg, if you'll jump in the picture with us. Hello, my name is Powell Miller. I'm the District Activities Coordinator uh, for Shelby County Public Schools. Uh, I get to start tonight with uh, some student recognitions. Tonight we're going to be um, recognizing Skylar Holt, uh, Shelby County High School uh, Bowling. Um, just a few accolades on Skylar. Uh, I've gotten to know Skylar over the last three and a half years. Uh, in 2021, Skylar, her sophomore season, was the Region 4 fourth place. Uh, and a KHSA state qualifier. Uh, KHSA state championship, she took seventh place. 2022, her junior season, she was the region four champion, entered the knockout round as the number three seed, ended up beating Ballard's number one player and the number one seed with a score of 210 to 181. And she took seventh in this KHSA state championship. And then this year, uh, her senior season, uh, she was the Region 4 champion, entered the knockout round as the number one seed, uh, and with a three-game score of 571 and won the championship with a score of 169 to 153. She'll be competing in the state championship um, February 8th. Her round is on the 8th, and uh, I just want to say congratulations, and uh, thank you so much for everything you do. Next board members, I would like to introduce to you a student who is going to um, give you a little presentation about a grant that she has received. And um, you are a student at West Middle, East Middle, East Middle School. And her name is Avery Oliver. And she'd like to tell you about her grant and her project. seventh grader at East Middle. I am involved in the Talented and Gifted program and decided I would like to complete a service learning project as my leadership project. Out of my desire to serve our community, I decided to organize a food drive in support of the Backpack program. The Backpack program is a nonprofit program that collects donated, canned, non-perishable food and packs it into backpacks to give out to children on the weekend who cannot afford their own food. Because of inflation, people need food now more than ever. In August alone, the backpack program gave out 400 backpacks full of food every week. After researching Shelby County, I discovered one of the top needs to address within our community is food insecurity, specifically for children. I love the idea of helping others, specifically people my age. And so I found out about the backpack program. I developed a team of other students in my school to help organize this project for this school year. 
Ms. Harris, my tag teacher, then gave me the opportunity to apply for a grant through Western Kentucky University that supports students doing service learning projects. I found out during Christmas break that we were awarded third place for the grant and will receive $500 to help us with this project. Now, we have expanded this project across all three middle schools in our county and are using it for a friendly competition. The food drive will run from February 6th through 22nd. We would also like the opportunity to collect food from the community members where they could bring in cans to the central office and place them at either the East Middle, West Middle, or the MCM box. We have plans to come and pick up all donated items and deliver them to the backpack program after the drive ends. I can already see how participating in this project has had huge benefits on my life. I was a global citizen because I showed empathy and respect towards the less fortunate. I also impacted our community responsibly by collecting food for those in need. I was also a responsible collaborator because I seek diverse team members who I knew were responsible and would do their part to get the job done. My group and I also gave and received feedback to make sure we were making the best decisions possible. Finally, I was a critical thinker because I asked questions to fully understand. Also, I designed multiple solutions to a problem. I am very excited to see the results of our hard work and to be able to give back to our community. Thank you for allowing me to share this with you tonight and for the opportunity to help serve our community. Thank you. And Avery, we're very proud of you. And I love how you tied everything to the profile of the graduate competencies. Um, that is awesome. And you, you really have nailed it, I think. And so we'd like to recognize you with a certificate as well tonight. If you'll come forward and take a picture with us. Right. So our next recognition um, is also of one of our middle schools. Um, basically, we want to say congratulations to this year's future city teams. Uh, this year, West Middle School brought home awards. The eighth grade team was known as New Jubail. Yay! And they won the Best City Presentation Award. The seventh grade team was known as Cape Town. They won Best Land Surveying Award. And um, Rachel Holloway, where's Rachel? Aha, stand up, Rachel. She won Best Presenter. That's pretty cool. That's Give her awesome. a round of applause for that. <laughs> yeah. And we have a certificate for you for Best Presenter. Um, and East Middle also brought home some awards. Stay up here, Rachel. Don't run away. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> she's like, gosh. Um, East brought home some awards. We had the eighth grade team was Salt Lake City. They won the Best City Essay Award. The seventh grade team was Raleigh, and they won the Best Futuristic Design and students were competing with 26 teams from all over Kentucky, and there were six teams total that worked really hard to prepare for this competition with their phenomenal coach, Miss Amanda Harris. <laughs> so um, this year, West Middle's eighth grade team, New Jubail, won the regional competition, and they get to head to Washington, D.C. if the board approves it at the end of this meeting on your consent agenda items um, to compete against other regional winners. And um, this team consists of Miss Rachel Holloway, who has stood up there so wonderfully. And um, to join her, Tyler Fisher, come on down. <laughs> And Alex Gamelski. That is awesome. Now, do we have members from the other teams? Cape Town, where is Cape Town? Will you stand up for us? Cape Town, seventh grade West Middle students, Madeline Bo Bolin? 
Come, she's not here. Um, Riley Robards, come on down. <laughs> Elijah Greider, no, okay. Alicia Richardson, come on down. And Asher Montgomery, okay. Um, we also had, I'm trying to think which team is next. I want to get them right. New Jubail, Cape Town, Salt Lake. Salt Lake City, eighth grade at East Middle, Ryan Chinote. Okay. Um, Maggie McDowell. No. Salt Lake, we will send them their certificates <laughs> in the mail. And if I have to go get a picture of them, you know we will. Okay. Um, let's see. Is there another team here? Raleigh is here. Okay. Raleigh team, stand up for us. Here you go. So Levi Farmer, come on down. <laughs> Gabe Seminick. <laughs> Levi Metten. <laughs> and the, the rest of the team, I'll read their names. They're not here though. They are? Oh, back there. I didn't see her behind me. Okay, great. Um, Leona Breckenridge. <laughs> Elliot Underwood. Okay. Joshua Harris. Avery Jarbo. Yay! <laughs> Alan Zhang. And um, Ivan Penix. Okay, well, they got to hear their name on YouTube. Just let them know. Okay, and so we are um, very, very proud of all of you all, and we'd love to take a picture of you. Would that be okay? Oh, good, because we're going to. <laughs> and Miss Harris, would you squeeze in there with them? Because we, we have to recognize, um, and well, both Miss Harris's, yes, are the, the principal who cheered them on and the, the teacher who uh, prepped them and spent lots of time with them working on it. <laughs> okay, just when you thought recognitions were over, we have our monthly core values recognitions. Uh, we've recognized our board members, we've recognized some phenomenal students tonight, and now we are here to recognize um, those people who were nominated by their colleagues who um, are exemplary core value um, star members of our faculty. So um, we're going to begin first with accountability. First we have Patricia, oh and if you're here, stand up and wave so the board can see who you are. Um, we appreciate people who get to come and, and let the board uh, see faces with names. So accountability, Patricia Riddle from the ATC, Josh Rhodes from East Middle School, Deidre Vidal from Clear Creek Elementary, Kelly Hudson from Marnell C. Mormon, Sereda Kiata from Northside, Ann Head from Northside, Katie Ramos from East Middle School, Jeff Bracken from Shelby County High School, and Abigail Sawyers from Wright Elementary. Accountability. Give them a round of applause. Our next core value for Shelby County Public Schools is empathy. And, oh, my slide did not fare well. 
I apologize for that. I've worked really hard on it. Um, actually, my intern worked really hard on it, and I'll give her a shout out because she's wonderful, but it sometimes doesn't, uh, I don't know what happened. Um, Kara Allen from West Middle School for Empathy. Jeremy Devine from Shelby County High School. Megan Baxter from Heritage. Susie Burkhart from MLCHS and SCHS. Billy Corfage from East Middle School. Abby Seaman from SCHS. Brittany Stone from our central office. Tammy Simpson from the Shelby County Public Schools Daycare. And Chris Collins from Martha Lane Collins. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have Growth Mindset. And it did the same thing. Um, and we have several. I love the number of people who um, were nominated for this category. Stephanie Herndon from Clear Creek Elementary. Cassandra Kemper from Clear Creek Elementary. Tana Seaver from Northside. Charlotte Elkins from Painted Stone Elementary. Maria Thomas from Northside. Amanda Nett <coughs> from Wright Elementary. Amy Allen from Wright Elementary, Sarah Buchanan from West Middle School, Nathan Franz from Martha Lane Collins, Patrick Avery from Shelby County High School, and Margo Wisman from Shelby County High School, representing Growth Mindset this month. <laughs> Next is Integrity. Nominated for Integrity, we have Anna Anson from East Middle, Yay, there she is. <laughs> Charles Ives from Shelby County High School. Evan Young from, that would be West Middle School, not Central Office, West Middle School. <laughs> Chris George from Collins High School. Give them a round of applause. Integrity. Next we have professionalism. And nominated are Allison Will from the Area Technology Center, Lisa McDonald from Central Office, Melina Garcia from Martha Lane Collins High School, and Charles Ives from Shelby County Public Schools. <laughs> that should be Shelby County High School. Okay. And teamwork, I knew that would be like that. Um, <laughs> after seeing the others. I always love announcing teamwork, but it takes a little longer. But to me, what it says is, wow, look at the people working together in Shelby County Public Schools, how amazing um, this is, um, that we have this many nominations. Um, first, we have Tiana Richardson from Northside, Karen Watson from West Middle, and Marnell C. Mormon. There she is. <laughs> Jill Renfro from Heritage. Eva Bentley from Shelby County High School, Kathy Shelf from Southside, Susan Razor from Northside, Katie Mullins from Clear Creek Elementary, Grant Gartland from West Middle School, Karen Watson from West or MCM. You were nominated twice in the same category, different people. I love when that happens. Mm -hmm. Stand up and wave again. You deserve it. There you go. Okay. <laughs> Devin Hicks is here from Marnell C. Mormon School. <laughs> Megan Kirsting from Shelby County High School. Kevin Cardwell from Shelby County High School. Kim Malone from Northside. Tammy Gibson from Northside. Nicole Ambrose from Clear Creek Elementary. Shannon Paff from Southside. There she is. <laughs> Faith Hamilton from Marnell C. Mormon. Pandora Morrow from West Middle. Ann Head from Northside, Kevin Osborne from Martha Lane Collins High School, <laughs> Bonnie Coffey from Wright Elementary, Emily Swindler from Northside, Troy Hood from Shelby County Public Schools, Stacy Beard from Martha Lane Collins High School, Matthew Mason from Shelby County High School, Brittany Rogers from Northside, Abby Kidwell from Martha Lane Collins High School, and Carly Gates from Wright Elementary. Uh, let's give our teamwork nominees a round of applause. <laughs> now, something that I didn't mention before I read all of those names is that each month we give the chance uh, to all of the district employees to nominate 
um, someone in each category. And they have to tell us why they are exemplary. And so we read all of these stories, and all of them are really good. Like you just read them and you think, wow, this is happening in our school district, and it's happening for our kids daily um, because of these core values. Um, but we did pick one that I'd like for Dr. Sugg to share. And um, it's a wonderful story and something to celebrate. So I'll <coughs> pass it on to you. I will, and this is one that we actually, uh, I talked about in my board report, I uh, can't remember which month, but I think it was <coughs> maybe December, uh, anyway, a few weeks ago, we highlighted Maria Thomas from Northside Preschool. She is the Family Resource Center person at Northside, and one of the things I talked to you about when we highlighted her before was that our state office that runs our Family Resource Center uh, offices across the state asked for nominations for programs and people that had a great impact on students. And over 900 reports were submitted. Only 90 really met the bar uh, for that uh, recognition and Maria submitted one and Maria, well, Maria was submitted as one of those folks that had that great impact. So one of the things that it said about her is this honor not only demonstrates her passion to work with families and students, but also her ability to measure the outcomes for the services, programs, and activities. So that is also really accountability. She's being accountable for her work. And Ms. Swindler said, Maria, was nominated for this positive impact and the work she has with our English language learning parent groups at Northside. So we're not only teaching the students, we're also teaching their parents. The families and students that she works with, they all showed growth in the English language acquisition assessment called the WAPT that we have to give to measure uh, that growth. So all of the all of the folks that came in and worked with her showed growth, all of those students. So we really appreciate her, Th thanks to her and hats off to her for continuing to help grow not only our students, but also our EL families. And she's not here because they had a born learning activity over at Northside, and so she's over there tonight helping students and families learn English and learn to be acclimated into our educational system. So thank you to Maria. And one other thing I'll say about Maria, uh, she was also an integral part in submitting the application about being a family-friendly school, and Northside Preschool was the only preschool in the state of Kentucky that they deemed to give that designation mm -hmm. to. So that's a very high bar, and Maria helped with that. Absolutely. Very good. We have one more recognition tonight before we get down to business. And um, this one came across my desktop, and I said, oh, we'll schedule that for February. And they said, oh, can we come this Thursday? And I said, sure. So I'm going to apologize for not having a certificate ready, but this is really good stuff. Um, from East Middle School, Miss Amber Rose, who is the sponsor for Junior Beta Club, has a student. Miss Kaylin, and last name, Kidwell. It was a two double K. Miss Kaylin Kidwell, um, who is a visual artist, has won fifth place at the regional Beta Club convention for her artwork. And she gets to go to the next level competition, and we're really excited about that for her. And pal, you're getting pictures for me? And if you check our social media, I posted it on our Facebook, make sure you follow us to learn more about Shelby County Public Schools and our talented students and our marvelous teachers right there. Thank you for bringing the plaque, Miss Rose. That is awesome. <laughs> she wants one more, yes. And I love the artwork too. So Miss Kaylin, I have a question for you. Do you take art with Mr. Hypes? Yes, I love that. And um, what, can you tell us about your artwork? What inspired you? Let me see. 
Okay, Beautiful colors. And she has glass and it's cut inside there. Very neat. Quite beautiful. So we expect to hear how your next level of competition goes, okay? And maybe you'll be back and we will celebrate you again. Thank you. Public input. We didn't have any. Mm -hmm. okay. I didn't want to leave it out. That brings us to discussion items. Superintendent's report, Dr. Sugg. Okay. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to all of our board members, including our students uh, that sit up here, because we couldn't accomplish what we accomplished without you all here at the board table. Uh, I've served as a board member myself. I know how difficult it is. It's a lot of reading, a lot of data to look at, uh, a lot of listening to your constituents, whether they be people in the community or high school students. So we appreciate all of you, and I'm saying that on behalf of all of the Shelby County Public Schools employees. Thank you for what you do. So a couple of things just to to catch you up where I've been spending my time. Uh, this is kind of the midpoint in the year and we are not at the 100th day yet. That is maybe Monday, is that correct? So the 100th day is Monday, which is a big celebration. But I kind of look at January as kind of midpoint. And so I'm doing mid-year reviews with all of our principals. Uh, we're looking very carefully at their professional growth plans and what we can do uh, to help them grow professionally, both as individuals, but also for the needs of their staff. We're analyzing our professional development that we've had so far this year, uh, looking to see if it's uh, been, been productive and looking to see what kinds of things we need to do for next year to number one, grow our staff, but number two, the result of that is to achieve with our student body. So that's one of the things that is taking a lot of my time and I love it because we get into classrooms and we get to, to talk to kids about what they're learning and that's my favorite place to be. The second thing on my report is I uh, just wanna review and remind you about something. Our local laboratory of learning, that is one of the, we were one of the seven communities that were selected in the first cohort by KDE, by the commissioner and his staff and mainly because we had done such a great job around our profile of graduates. So we've had that in place for maybe six years or so, and many districts across the state of Kentucky did not have that in place and are just beginning. So because that we had that in place already, we are taking it to the next level and kind of being in the forefront, and I, I think we'll be a forerunner to some of the work that some of those coming behind us will do. We're focusing very specifically on how to communicate with everybody in Shelby County what we do with the profile of a graduate, how we teach it, how we assess it, and how they can be an integral part of all of that. We need those partnerships with community members and parents in our classrooms, in our schools. So we've had a couple of presentations and we're, um, getting out into the community talking to people about what that is and what it's what it really is all involved with. Recently, uh, we had a chamber mixer and Kiwanis today, and I want to say thank you specifically to Dr. Adam Hicks, and previous to his work on this was Susan Dougal before she retired. And also, Mike Hesketh is our community member that serves as the co-director of this laboratory of learning along with Dr. Hicks. Mike is a local entrepreneur and he is extremely invested in Shelby County Public Schools. He has students in his business working in an internship process and he knows the profile of a graduate like the back of his hand. He carries it with him everywhere he goes. He talks to business people about it. And so Mike, uh, hats off to Mike if he's listening tonight. 
And so I just wanted to give you a little bit of a review and a reminder about that because we have been out in the community talking about the need to have people in our classrooms, in our schools, helping to partner with us as we educate the future employers and employees in Shelby County. So I've got a couple of slides that we can look at. Uh, the first one is something that I hope you hear a little more about. We'll be doing some type of a, of a report for you a little later in the year. But we've got a program called Successful Start at two of our schools, Painted Stone and Southside Elementary. We have lots of other elementary schools wanting to get this program in their schools because they're hearing about the amazing data that is coming out of it. Kindergartners and how they're learning to read, just a different approach. Um, some of it I think of is a little bit more old school. Some of the things that uh, maybe I learned when I was learning in school, there are some newer techniques and all of that put together is helping our teachers uh, be extremely productive with some of our, our kindergarten learners. I really don't wanna give you any, any data right now because I want to wait until the end when we have the proof in the pudding, but I can tell you it is extremely exciting to see the number of readers we already have in our kindergarten in those two, two schools. All of our other schools obviously are working on the same things. This is just a different approach. And so uh, these two schools stepped up and said we'd like to try that and uh, they're being very successful with it. And I'd like to thank uh, Artavia Acklin and also Shannon Path for uh, having that growth mindset to take on something new. And it did involve a tre tremendous amount of training on the part of the teachers continued throughout the year. So a lot of extra work for them, but they are really enjoying it. I've been over to, um, actually to Painted Stone three times to observe it. I've been over to Southside and observed it just this week. It's great for all kids, no matter if they have a disability, if they have uh, English as a second language, they are learning to read. So that's really exciting. And you'll be hearing more about that later in the year. The second one I want to show you, I am really not in jail, but <laughs> neither is Mr. Green, but we participate in Leadership Shelby this year, and we are really enjoying that. Both of us are learning a lot about the community of Shelbyville and Shelby County, and this past uh, couple of weeks we did Law and Justice Day. Uh, we got to do some of the training uh, with uh, the it's called a Milo system, where it's actually putting you in the place of a peace officer, a law enforcement official in the sheriff's office, and um, you know, play out a scenario about whether we would use deadly force or whether we would choose to de-escalate the situation or use some kind of uh, stun gun. It, it was extremely uh, stressful. You think being a principal is stressful? Well, imagine what being a police officer is, and we were put in those roles. So this was just a fun picture we took because we got to tour the old jail. Oh. And actually there's a movie being made with, and I've forgotten his name, the actor. Ethan, Ethan Hawke is in it and some others. And actually I think it's gonna be on the 31st, they're gonna shut down part of uh, the streets here in Shelby County. So it, it was, it was really, um, it was eye-opening to see what that looked like, and it was open until I think maybe the 60s, 70s. So yeah, nobody wants to end up there. But we also got to tour the new jail, which is very, a very updated and amazing facility. Uh, we got to talk to some inmates that uh, have gone through rehabilitation. They've gone through, through some amazing programs to help them get back to being productive members of society. So I just can't say enough thank you to everybody that puts on Leadership Shelby, number one. But this day in particular was extremely well done. And our sheriff, Mark Moore, and uh, many others, um, Kyle Tipton, I think Captain Kyle Tipton was the uh, lead on that day. So just thanks to them. And then I always just enjoy going to the lunch rooms. And so uh, in, at MCM the other day, I made friends there with a couple of, the, couple of guys, and I 
question, why are you out here and you're not in there? And I thought I was going to hear bad things, but they said, no, we just want to talk. It was a little loud in there, and so it was kind of a treat. So I enjoy going around to see the lunchroom, see what they're serving, and I think you're going to get a little, a little highlight of that a little later. Wendy's going to talk to us about some of that. And then I referenced the next slide is the Midday Mixer. That was a chamber-sponsored event. And you can't tell from that picture, but I want to say there were probably 75 people there. Uh, it was standing room only in the Blair Center. We talked about the L3 work, SCL3, the Laboratory of Learning, and again made our pitch to the community uh, that we need you. COVID is not over, but our schools are open back up and people are welcome and we, we want you in our buildings. And I really can't say enough about the support that we feel from our chamber and also uh, everybody that was there. Uh, they represented all different uh, walks of life in Shelby County. Every business and industry, it seemed like, was represented there. So we appreciate all those folks. And then the last one, we are all having a growth mindset and doing professional learning, including me, our uh, administrators, and we are working in uh, partnership with Meade County Public Schools. They have done some very significant gap closing where their students that have IEPs, their special education students, are scoring um, very well on uh, many of our state assessments and the strategies and the techniques they're using over there uh, we've been going over, uh, we've been over there two times actually to see in classrooms. We were in high school classrooms, middle school classrooms, and elementary classrooms. And then we Zoom once a month to talk about uh, the things that they're trying to show us. So we're always learning from each other in education, not only just in our district, but also outside of our district. If people are doing great things, we want to know about them. Uh, so that's kind of what I've been doing the last couple of weeks, and I'll be happy to answer any questions if you all have some. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, that takes us to staff reports. <clears throat> Ascension Alternative Mid-Year Report. Mr. Ben Roberts. I'd like to start with a thank you before anything else. Um, it was supposed to be myself and Brittany Money. Uh, Miss Money is not feeling well, so uh, you're stuck with me. I apologize. Uh, but we want to start with this, and it's just a thank you for your support. Uh, this program would not be here without you. We are truly blessed uh, to have uh, the amount of support that you give, and I, I don't think you understand the, the effect it's making on so many students and the change that it has made within our building and I know our district. So thank you uh, and start with that. Next I'll get us started. So I think the theme of today, the theme of our building is change. If you look, uh, we began the year with 11 students. We began the year with seven students from the high school, one middle school student and three students enrolled within our GED program. As of today, uh, our most accurate numbers, we have 22 high school students, we have eight middle school students, we have 15 GED students with a total of 45 students. Change is, is, is there. It, it's every day, I think I've took five phone calls today alone on some adding some new students. Uh, they are coming, uh, but we are doing some big things with them. Uh, within our short-term enrollment, uh, we've, uh, we've had 60 students come out of that uh, come out of that room. Um, we've also had nine voluntary students uh, that have chose to stay with us. Um, now with that being said, these are nine students that have hit their goal, that had the opportunity to transition, and then when we came to that transition meeting, they have chose to stay within our building. And I think that's really what we want. We want students uh, to feel safe, to have a safe environment, and if we are the better environment for them, we want the opportunity for them to stay. I know that number actually uh, 
not all students have hit their goals yet, but as of today, when I was talking with some students, that number is more in the 15 to 20 range. Just those students are waiting on to hit their goals, and once they do hit them, they'll stay with us. Uh, and so our short-term students, 63, uh, I do know, uh, I don't think it got into this report, the most accurate one. We've had over 63 students within our short-term room. 33 of those students have been drug-related, and we've only had two students that have returned. So I think that alone is a very good um, indicator that this program is working, the short-term room is working, but I really want to give credit to Beth Cathcart. Uh, what she's doing in that room is, is very special and, and it's helping students uh, get the help that they need. All right, our GED program. Uh, this is where I, I needed Brittany money here because uh, she is the reason our GED program is successful. Every day I walk into her room, uh, the, the students are engaged, they're learning, they're doing experiments, they are going over their stuff, and, and we're having major, major success. Uh, so I'll just go through it. So GED test ready is taken, 40. That's, uh, that means an, a student before they can get to the GED test have to do a test ready to show that they are prepared and ready for that test. The test is very accurate. Um, and so most of our students, all but uh, I think two, actually have, when they've taken it, they've been prepared and they've actually gone and passed within that test area. Uh, GED test taken is 16. Uh, GED uh, test passed is eight. We now have tests within three points of passing. We have five students. Uh, students within range of completing the GED is four. Um, I am happy to announce this. We uh, are officially the first district in the state of Kentucky uh, to have a GED student pass fully through. And so that happened last week. Uh, we will come back and, and celebrate that one. But I think that's a major milestone because that is actually a student that I think would uh, have dropped out. That's a student we would have lost. But now it's a student that we can give them something and they can walk away with. And he's already in a trade school and he's already has plans to go further his education. So I'm really, really happy with that one. And then we, we have a few others that are very close. Um, and I'm just going to read you with, uh, read you with, uh, thank you. I'm going to read you what Brittany Money uh, has, has left me, uh, which is this. Um, we just got a report this week uh, that the KDD has also referred a outside uh, company or also, a, uh, sorry, school district. Uh, the director of the middle school and high school teaching and learning for the GED has sent them to us. And so now we are one of the flagships for this district. Um, we have Boone County that will come and visit us and we do a Zoom with them tomorrow. Uh, and then we've also had two other districts that have reached out to me personally and wanted a walk through and to sit down with us to see what we are doing. Because uh, I think the word is out that we're doing some pretty big things within our program. So if you go to the next one. Uh, school structures. This has also been a massive change. So we are, we are going towards project-based learning. Um, that is our goal, that is what we are gonna hit. That's, uh, that's a bigger goal than, than what you can imagine. Uh, but our goal is to get away from that online learning and truly more into teaching within the classroom, working on projects, and students being engaged within that room. Uh, we have different type of things going on. Uh, from the curriculum, we have the CIA, the coordinator coaching. Uh, Tracy Hulsman is in our building at least three days a week, uh, and, and it has been a huge help uh, to me and to our teachers. We have the digital learning coordinator coaching who comes in, I'd say, three days a week, and we have the OVEC um, who is helping me, but also helping our teachers when it comes to standard-based learning. Uh, we have a new tool, Life Ready, which is up and running, uh, where we set goals with students, we set rewards with students, uh, we make sure that they are uh, accountable for their behaviors. So if they are following our expectations, which is safe, responsible, respectful, they are earning those rewards. Um, we have School Connect, which is a behavior support program. Uh, that has been big into getting and also up and running within our advisory program. Um, we have therapeutic services, our drug and alcohol through Ms. Beth Cathcart, who I, I can't praise enough. Uh, and we also have emotional and behavior supports. Those are our short-term students that are also getting those, but that's also our Ascension students who are getting whole group, small group, and one-on-one -on -one therapy type sessions. Uh, 
we are taking a visit to the Providence as a whole staff. So on February 3rd, uh, Mr. Adam Hicks uh, is going to drive us and we are all going to the Providence uh, because we want to see what they're doing. Uh, we, we did the visit uh, earlier last year and we saw some really good things and so I want my staff to see what they're doing because that is an end goal and I want them to know that we, we can reach that. Um, advisor in the morning has changed uh, very dramatically. Uh, we are now focusing on different SEL topics and SEL subjects. We are also uh, really going at the profile of a uh, graduate within all of our students um, just because some of those are very key to our students on being behind and we've got to get those skills within them right now. And so we know that we need to start now. Uh, I am also happy to say that uh, this is not as accurate. Uh, we now have two graduates of Ascension Academy. Uh, as of this week, we had another student who uh, completed her credits. Uh, she was a student that worked very hard. Uh, she worked from an online. She did work-based learning. Um, but she, she set a goal last year that she wanted to graduate early, and as of last week, she, she reached that goal. Um, credits recovered is 15. That is uh, the hard work of our teachers. That is uh, not giving up on students that want to quit, and that is uh, working extra and above and beyond for students that need that extra help. And the total credits completed is 33.25. Um, so that's, that is a, a major thing. And our, right, our life ready, so we track every single day. If our students are meeting their goals, we track them and we make sure that they're earning what they need and what they, what they want through the uh, rewards that they set up. Um, our averaging uh, expectations is 84%. Uh, we have, so you can, in our building, you can get a positive reward, a positive tap is what we call it, and you can also get a negative tap. So if you're caught doing something above and beyond, you get that positive. Uh, if you're caught not doing something great, they're gonna get you with a negative tap. Uh, we are, this is the greatest ratio I've ever been a part of. We are 91 uh, positive taps to eight negative taps. And in an alternative school, that's pretty impressive. Uh, and so if you go on from there, I would love to invite you. So if you have time, love, love to, for you to come out and see what we have in our building right now. Do you have any questions? Thank you, Brother Thank you. I've got a couple questions. Absolutely. Um, so what, what is the... What's the number that you can handle in the facility? I'm glad you asked. Uh, we are at it. Um, so we had our Keck SAC uh, audit, uh, I believe on Tuesday. Um, the Keck SAC uh, is a company that we follow, or a, a, a program that we follow, that's who we get our funding through. Um, they are, we are a one to 10 ratio. I can tell you right now, I did the math, we are uh, one to 8.5 as we speak but that's not as accurate because I'm counting my special ed teacher within that ratio, and technically you're not allowed to count her within that one. So we are probably over it, if not at it. But you still have people calling every day more. We took okay. five phone calls today on five different situations. Okay, so I, I wanna clarify my question. Yes. Because you're talking about ratio of teacher, teacher to, student. to student. Yes. So, that's a staffing ratio. I get it. Yes, it is. I want to know, on top of that, what about the facility? Like your actual facility, what can you handle in terms of numbers without damaging the program that you've built? I think we're at it. Uh, we are, <laughs> uh, every day uh, worries me just because when you have the high behaviors that we have within the building, when you have high, uh, personalities within the building. Um, you try to limit uh, your classrooms and, and where you have them and the ability to spread them out. Right now I have three full-time teachers. I have a point seven teacher who is not who's not with us on Thursdays. We have a sub that comes in on Thursdays and then I have a full-time special education teacher. So we have to take that number and divide it between a very small amount of teachers uh, which you know Right now, our classes, we, we run a middle school plus, a high school one, a high school two. Each class has around nine students with them, which is pushing it. Yeah. Okay. And then my next question is 63, 33 is drug-related, two returned, which that's 
great numbers. Um, what out of the 33 on the drug is it mostly dab pen kind of, or are we talking like? Can you give me some examples? Are we seeing? I don't want to minimize any drug use, no. but are we are we seeing one type versus others? Uh, THC. Okay. And okay. it's the dab pen is a very common thing. Yep. Okay. That's all I have. Does anyone else have any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I want to say a couple of things before you leave. Um, the, uh, the vision of this program, when we looked at that last spring and Ms. Friels and um, Ms. Jackson were with us, we didn't look at barriers. Yep. We looked at where do we want to be four or five years out. And many of those metrics we've already surpassed. We really have, in a good way, mm -hmm. in a good way. Um, so once again, and that's a great question about the facility because that's a worry of mine. There are a few things we could do uh, to get us a little bit more um, wiggle room, but if we continue to grow like we are, it, it might be a real issue that we have to mm -hmm. look into very seriously. Um, I want to remind the board that we haven't had an expulsion no. in a good while. So not only are we seeing lives changed as in kids out there getting a GED, but we're seeing kids in school learning and not having the expulsion as the consequence. So uh, just hats off to everything you all do. And I don't think you all realize, but being the first at anything in the state, when they put this into place, and, and Dr. Hicks has been really hand in hand with Ben as they have tried to put our, especially our GED program mm -hmm. into place, they received many, many barriers when they made phone calls because yeah. even though this law passed last spring, there were lots of bureaucrats that weren't ready yet. Still, because still they, are not. <laughs> still, <laughs> some still might not be. So we, we forged ahead yes. and we would not accept no for an answer. Yeah. <laughs> and so Ben, thank you so much. You're the right person at the right time in the right place. Thank you. And, and you're really saving kids' lives. So thank you. We thank appreciate you all very much. You. Next, we'll have an update on facilities, maintenance, and custodial. Ms. Tingle. So I'm going to brag on Ben, because I've known Ben. I, I was in the presence um, when his father coached at Henry County High School, and his dad announced that they were going to have Ben. <laughs> so um, that really makes me feel old. <laughs> But uh, I know your dad is no longer with us, but he would be very <clears throat> proud of what you have accomplished. So I just want to give a shout out, a Henry County shout out. I know I'm a, Sh a Shelby County girl now, but Henry County shout out. So operations, uh, I was gifted on July 1st of last year, facilities, maintenance, and custodial. And these teams, I haven't had the opportunity to brag on them yet. And so this is the first time I can publicly comment compliment them on everything that they accomplish to ensure that our facilities are in top shape, ready for students to learn each and every day. And that's sometimes somebody's on staff 24 hours a day in these departments to make sure that happens. So if you'll turn to the first slide, we have a pretty big team, but there's always never enough, as you, as you guys know. John Swindler leads our director of facilities and under him is Laura Gordon. And then we have Scott Meredith, who is under John as our facilities engineer. Scott helps lead. Uh, Sherry Driver is his maintenance planner and then eight maintenance personnel. And then also under John is our warehouse and custodial manager, which is Troy Hood. Troy has two warehouse workers, 11 custodial supervisors, 45 custodians, and then we actually have two outside contracts that cover Shelby County High School and Martha Lane Collins. However, Troy also oversees that. So when I, I looked at, was, we were putting this together, the warehouse manager and custodial manager almost has their own school of, of employees. This is the easiest way for me to think of my principal mind there. So 
We've got a big team that has to do a lot of big work. And the next page shows you that big work. When you think about almost 1.3 million square miles of, or square feet, not square miles, square feet, we have 420.76 acres of property, 17 buildings, and three athletic complexes that we manage. It's a lot. So we have to make sure we have the right people and, and the right seats, and, and I believe that we do have that. Facility-wise, our facilities department takes care of all phases of construction. They help facilitate the building of our district facility plan that guides our work in regards to future construction or renovation. Insurance, management, and claims also come through facilities. So that's your workers' comp. If a student gets hurt, it's student accident insurance. It's our property insurance. They're also over our security in the sense of we've got panic buttons in schools, we've got fire alarms, keys, all that has to be managed and kept up to date. They also help us implement and approve our facility use agreements. And that is the idea that if you would like to use one of our buildings, there's a form, you've got to show insurance, we've got to make sure we've got custodial coverage. If there's a tech involved, we've got to get technology. So a lot of things behind the scenes go down for just the, the facility use agreements. They also run the mail and delivery, so we have individuals who do our mail across the district. This is inner office mail, is how the best way to um, explain that to everybody. And Bill Pacey, many, many years ago, took on our flags to ensure when they're going up, when they need to be at half staff, and that has continued to also be a responsibility of facilities. And I could probably go on and on, but, but this is, you can see there's a lot of things that happen from this department. Maintenance has several projects, and you all approved the unmet needs list, so this is, this is just a small piece of what's happening in the maintenance world. You can see that we've, we're working on um, the West Middle fire alarm upgrade. You have lighting controls that they are working on at Martha Lane Collins High School. There is LED lighting upgrades happening at Simpsonville and Heritage. We've got freezer cooler projects all over the district, but the most recent one is Heritage. They've been working on Milestone, and I'm sure Ben and anybody else that's over there can say we're getting ready to, to do that final stage there once the weather improves. We've got a boiler replacement project that is getting approval by the state boiler, what's the right word? boiler inspector. <laughs> Somebody does everything, but he'll be coming out as well to put his final look on that project. Updating water fountains with the bottle, the bottle fillers at Martha Lane Collins, a lot of schools already have those. And then um, Wright, West Middle, Clear Creek, their BAS system and upgrades to their HVAC, playground upgrades and roofing replacements. These are just some of the projects that they're handling. But on top of that, they have annual responsibilities as well. So our maintenance team, and this is, I won't go through this entire list, but you can see it's from making sure the sprinklers work to making sure the lights are working properly. Elevators have to be approved of and signed off on. Heating and air conditioning. Our two-way radios comes out of the maintenance department. So just lots of things there as well. We probably get more calls on doors and locks and building security than anything. Our custodial team, as I stated, works around the clock as well. And they're just a vital part of our health and, and safety of our schools. They are continuing to train, whether it be um, cleaning practices. Uh, Troy today in our operations meeting talked about he is looking at a third party to offer some additional leadership training to our custodial supervisors. So it's more than just cleaning. They're leaders in our building as well. And they're there to help sanitize and mist and maintain equipment. And some of the latest equipment, we joke about it, but there are new scrubbers that do not have to have an individual on them. They can be programmed and they can scrub floors without a human being on them. So you sometimes have to do a double take if you're in a building that's using one of those right now. 
It looks like there's a runaway scrub, floor scrubber. <laughs> and as we look ahead, the district facility plan has been emailed this week for approval. And once that comes back, that will be brought to the board. We continue to have staffing challenges in all areas of, of operations, maintenance facilities, custodial, even for head supervisor positions. But we did hire one this week, so we've got another uh, custodial supervisor that we are adding to Southside. But our biggest push forward is all of the approvals that you, the board approved last month, or last um, January meeting on the unmet needs list. That will be a big focus because it's a, it's a large list of items to try to get done in the next calendar year. So that's where we'll be moving on next. Any questions? Jill, you hadn't mentioned much about safety. A neighboring school in Jefferson County had a tragic problem last week and I don't know what they're doing in Frankfurt to help us understand that we definitely need something to check all and every backpack and how easy it's been for someone that's willing to take the chance to sneak by or whatever to come with a loaded weapon in, in the class. Uh, I know this is not our problem, it's everybody's problem in the state of Kentucky and all the United States, but what, I know this is not a business session, it's more or less a short session for the people in Frankfurt, but is there anybody that's representing us that is telling our legislators that, I remember when we put the one metal detector in Cropper School, and that was put in by the <clears throat> juvenile court system, and they paid for it. They're, they're not cheap, but in other words, it's another set of eyes that probably we need to, it, it would really help us. And when you have to check every backpack or whatever, that takes a lot of time. It slows down the flow of students going to school or coming into our buildings. Is there anything being thought of or talked about in these situations? Yesterday I had the opportunity to be part of the OVEC superintendent board meeting. And Jim Flynn is a part of our K group, which is uh, um, he's over the KASS, K -A -S -S, which is over the superintendents, but you have all the other K groups, KASA. Yes, it is on their list. We were given an, a legislative update yesterday, and Max Wise was also there as a senator of um, <coughs> Kentucky, and he also said that that is one of his top priorities, is the safety and security funding that was given as an unfunded mandate through SROs, they, he recognizes it and he said personally it is something that he wants to bring to the table, but you are correct. All indications are they're not gonna touch the budget this year, so it'll be preparing a plan for next year. So I, yes, they're talking about it. I, I, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna jump in and, and point out that if we think that the unfunded mandates of school resource officers was a price tag we couldn't afford. Um, the amount of support that is required when you put in metal detection, um, especially with the, uh, you have multiple entrances for each of our schools and for every detection unit, there's personnel that's required to man that, this is, uh, this is my business, this is what my company does, and I'm telling you, it's, it, the SRO expense is nothing compared to what this would be. So, uh, there's operationally quite a lot that goes into this discussion, not to be had in a, in a board meeting, but the strategy would have to be really well thought out uh, in order to even come close to something that could be afforded by any school system in the state, really in the country. It's, uh, there are schools that have it, um, but having multiple hospital facilities that I've put those in 
and manned those with personnel, I, I know what the cost is and I know uh, what we actually find in pockets and in bags and I've seen the amount of knives and blades and, and items that we find, but I also still have the collection box of the devices we get off the stretcher that got through another door or got through another path pathway. So uh, it's, it's not foolproof and people need to know that we can spend millions and millions and millions of dollars, but it's not going to be foolproof. So a uh, lot of strategy there and it's, a, it's definitely a rabbit trail, so. Does anyone have any more discussion? <clears throat> Another thing, the lawmakers are confident enough in it that they got it at every door at the Capitol when you go in and they're really hard to get through. So a small belt buckle can't only get through them. I know last session I went through there three or four times and it, uh, they really got them set up probably a little bit tighter than the airport. So, but I, I'm like you, they, they are, it's, it's not a foolproof, but it's something better than nothing. I just have one small question. From looking at the custodial, we only have two school buildings that have contract custodians the rest of them are out. That is correct. Okay. And even at those, Shelby County High School and Martha Lane Collins, we still have our staff there during the day. Because we found that it works better with our staff. Yes, thank you. I think, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, one, one question I did have, I noticed that you have workers comp in facilities instead of HR? Is that, that common in schools? I'll be honest, I inherited that, so I don't know. Yeah, I, That stood out to me. I, I never had really thought about mm -hmm. workers' comp being over in facilities. So, sorry, son. No, you're fine. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you, Jill. I like that report. Next, we'll have updates on the renovation project at Shelby County High School. Mr. Dolling. The, uh, can you hear me? To get started, I'd like to, on behalf of Cordell, KMBA, and the contractors express our appreciation for the board and for the whole team, you know, all the way through the school staff and Jill and John's team and even your students. Uh, we've got a great team. So uh, thank you. Uh, next slide. Uh, this is the uh, phasing uh, that discussed previously. We, the pink and the orange is finished. The uh, yellow was in progress. We'll, Get into some more details at the end. Next slide. Uh, more areas being worked uh, that we that there's a description at the end of this that we'll go into some more detail. Next slide. This uh, was issued uh, several months ago. This was I had to give this to the board to the uh, building inspector to let him know where we were working in the building. Some of these areas have been turned over since this was issued. So. This is old. Uh, some of those areas have, uh, is now in use by the school. The next slide. The uh, phase one in the, in the front, we're, uh, I'm not gonna go exactly down that uh, list. I'll just give you the current. The, uh, your solid surface column wraps are complete. You've moved into your library. The uh, trophy case is in. The terrazzo for the social stairs, expected delivery is March. So uh, that'll finish that area up, that'll look great. The metal wall panels for the building is not good news. Uh, we still don't have those and 
they're telling us now it's February, so uh, the, uh, the last, when they told us it was February, it sounded a little bit more confident, but till they arrive, uh, I'm not confident. But uh, so that's the metal wall panels. Uh, phase two, wallpaper on site, and uh, they've actually already done the prep work. So uh, on weekends, uh, they're hitting that little licks at a time on weekends to do, you've got wallpaper in your cafeteria, and then that's in progress on weekends. The phase five auxiliary gym, we, we just started working in there recently. Uh, we're gonna hit it full force in the next, probably next week. There's some stuff moving out and we're moving some stuff in to, to start tackling that auxiliary gym. In the phase six, gym cafeteria art and ag, uh, we've turned over a classroom in the ag room and a storage room and uh, in a third area that escapes me that was turned over recently that was in red a few slides ago. Countertops in the dressing rooms are installed. The ceilings are going in in the dressing rooms and uh, they're painted and we're anticipating giving over the auditorium uh, next month in February. Uh, completed auditorium with your carpet and functional dressing rooms. <coughs> Phase seven, the third level, uh, spring break, we're anticipating, uh, actually it should be before spring break, but our, uh, um, our report says spring break, but I think we can do better than that on that uh, third level, they call it, in area A, phase seven. Next slide. Milestone campus, the uh, heat is on, the building is painted out, the ceiling grid is installed, the uh, toilet fixtures are probably 90% complete. Uh, ceiling grid is complete all except for the concessions area. And we had to lower the uh, coiling doors uh, for the concessions and those are lowered now so we can finish up the concessions. We're, uh, we're probably about 10 days away from above ceiling inspection and then we can drop ceiling tiles at milestone. We anticipate uh, giving that over for use uh, mid uh, second, third week of February. That's a picture of your media center. If you haven't seen it yet, it's a treat. It's a, it's a nice media center. There's some more pictures of the media center. Next slide. It's another view. Next slide. Another view. Next slide. On our weather days, we just keep a log uh, of our weather days. We have uh, actual weather days and then contract uh, days that we got to allow for. And the difference is uh, 69 days that would, that would extend the contract out. Next slide. Uh, phase one, this is our original completion was August uh, 2022. Current completion less, uh, uh, current completion is spring break. That was old news. Um, phase one is your media center. So the, what's lacking in phase one is the social stair. And that's gonna be March. Phase six, original completion, August 22nd. Uh, majority of this phase is complete. And uh, we wrapped up a bunch more during Christmas break. And uh, some of those red areas that was in the previous slide is, is ongoing work uh, for phase six. Phase seven, Original completion January 23rd. Uh, current completion spring break. That's the area that I think we could uh, turn over to you quicker than spring break. And Milestone Campus will uh, will be ready for your spring season. Uh, it'll be February. We'll give that to you. Next slide. Uh, next slide. The uh, some the next board meeting. There's going to be some items coming towards you. ASI 55, there was uh, some casework that was transferred from the old art room to the new art room. There's some moving cost and install cost with that, wasn't a whole lot. Uh, the PR 41 was uh, some additional barrier netting that was requested uh, for Doyle. The uh, PR 17 is an ongoing uh, pricing that's, that's trickling in. It was like over 100 pages of code uh, review by the uh, building inspector that 
just things that uh, had to be brought to code. So uh, some of that stuff has already passed us, but there's still some of it in front of us. PR 45, your gym floor replacement, that's scheduled to start on March 15th. And uh, there'll be a time extension for adverse weather days. When the uh, previous slide, when we talked about the original completion date being August of 2022, that's without the weather days being added into that. That schedule has not been updated yet. And there's a picture of the school. Next slide. And any questions? I do have a question. Uh, did you say that, actually, I, I'm, I'm going to ask the question to either Mr. Swindler or Mr. Miller. Uh, are we, are we planning on, uh, is the Burks Branch facility going to be ready to be used for spring sports? The, the park, yes, yeah. baseball, softball. Yeah. It's, it's in shape and it's going to be able to be used for spring sports. Yeah. Okay. As contingency, if uh, I think I heard you say that you're expecting that the facility is going to be ready for milestone. Milestone. Yes, yes. the milestone track. The track is that the track only. The field track and track? field okay. house. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that we. Yeah, okay. That's, that's my only clarification I wanted. Thank you. I gave everyone just a, a memo with a summary of our contingency funds for this project so that you can see where we are right now. The construction contingency that was on our latest approved BG1 was about 2.6 million. And so far to date, the board has approved about 1.6 million in change orders to those various construction contracts. In addition to those change orders, there have been a few smaller dollar items. They total about $45,000 in work that was necessary but did not impact any of those construction contracts. So they do not come to you through the change order process that Codell helps manage. Um, and then there's a note there below to give you an idea of what some of those items are. Uh, for example, water line and water hydrant work that was needed. So that's part of what you see there in that $45,000. And then on the plus side, we do have some interest that we have earned on the funds in this construction project since the inception of the project, and that's about $342,000 to date. So as long as we have an active project with funds in it, we will continue to attribute interest earned to this project. So our contingency as of today is about 1.3 million, but as we have heard, there are some other change orders coming. John, would you like to say anything about those? You know, we mentioned one, the gym floor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. gym floor. And, uh, like Bill's already alluded to, it's a, it's a live project. We're keeping the project moving, and um, there are items that have come up in question for price requests or claims from the contractor that are under review by the architect, engineering, as well as the Codell team. So, what is this? Just uh, resand the floor, or is it? Got to be turfed up and put down. For the uh, gym floor, uh, the board had approved to have a full tear out of the old floor. Uh, it, when we had done the sanding um, about 13 years ago, that, that was the last sanding that the floor could take. Um, so, um, as you as you sand a floor, do a full sanding, you lose a third of the life, and that was the last time we could do it. So, as long as you don't hit any nails. Correct. That's the gym. That's Right when you walk in. The big gym. Is it going to be taken back from students and staff until it's finished, or will we just, I mean, I imagine we're not allowed in there. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I just wondered. Yeah, March 15th, uh, we've worked it out with the contractor, and um, the goal is to have it in, in play for activities starting in June, particularly for the uh, NCAA, I almost say it wrong. Titan Rockets Summer Shootout. Titan Rockets Summer Shootout. And how many teams come to that for the... It's an NCAA showing for coaches, correct? Yeah. Yes. Uh, 
the mm -hmm. 18th. So. so you're talking about doing the large gym. What about the small gym? Uh, the small gym, uh, we'll be working in there to get it ready by March 15th as far as paint, HVAC, uh, painting in the, in the locker rooms, lighting, uh, and that work. And uh, Bill's, Bill and as the contractor team as well know that that's our goal to have that flip-flop so that we can have, that acti have activities in there while they're working in the other gym. But that flooring is okay? That flooring will do a, a screen and coating in the, during the summer months. Is there any way, Ms. Barley, that you could sell blocks of that floor to Rocket fans wow. like they've done at Rupp Arena two How times? How do you want to speak to that? Wow. I've got one, so. <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 uh, we're already working with Shelby County High School admin on that kind of, those kind of projects. When the floor does come up, selling those, uh, keeping certain pieces uh, for memorabilia uh, to keep in the school at different places. Uh, so those plans are being done. Thank you. Yes. Does anyone else have any questions? No, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Next, that takes us to board discussion. I just want to start out um, with a couple of conferences that we have coming up. The KSBA, February 24th through the 26th at the Galt House in Louisville. And the COSBA is March 30th through April 12th in Tampa, Florida. And I'm sure everybody's talked to Miss Kathy if they're going or not. Yes, no, maybe. Okay. So we'll start on this end this week. Andrew, oh. we'll start with you. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I want to say thank you for all the, uh, the notes from the students. It's fun to read uh, from kindergarten to third grade, I think, are the, the cards I was reading. And uh, that's, that's fun. Really enjoyed the, the video from Southside. So thank you for putting that together. Um, sounds like we really do a lot. They, they really, <laughs> but I wanna make sure everybody knows uh, we do not have anything to do with snow day decisions. <laughs> um, I've told my kids over and over that. Um, so make, make sure that's clear. Um, I did have a first uh, experience, the, a first time experience in my board uh, this week I had a student, a high school student from Shelby Valley contact me about getting ISS at her school. She got in trouble and she wanted me to take care of it. And uh, <laughs> um, so I, I responded and let her know that I have nothing to do with Shelby Valley, um, but I would talk to her principal and let him know that she's not happy. Uh, so that was, that was a first. Um, I, so, um, the, the things that we get as board members. Um, I, my, my last comment um, is, uh, you know, I, I thought it was interesting. I had made this note before I'd actually paid attention to looking at uh, the mid-year reviews. Um, I actually always look at February as it's our shortest month, but it feels the longest to me. Um, the dark days, the dark mornings, the dark nights, the um, it seems like this is, for me, it's like the, the dog days of winter that we're getting ready, that we're in or that we're getting ready to go into. And I, I feel like I noticed that with either it's the, the players at workouts in the mornings uh, with the baseball team or it's my kids that are just a little extra tired. And I just wanted to kind of just remind everybody that it's that time of year that uh, kids need a little bit more rest maybe some vitamins, uh, maybe put the devices down and get to bed a little bit earlier. Um, a little bit more patience is needed for everybody uh, because I think this time frame gets a little bit rough and then all of a sudden it's down, like roll, roll, roll right into the testing and into the school year prom and graduations and all kinds of fun stuff, but we gotta make it through February. Uh, it's always, may be wrong, but that's the mindset in the client house. And I, I thought I would just share that public message of let's uh, find ways to uh, make sure that we're keeping kids healthy and happy. I, I do hear reports from hospitals around the country that I work with that I think we might have a little bit of a, uh, some 
like one more round of bugs that we're going to be dealing with, and mm -hmm. we really don't need that with our attendance. We need kids in the classrooms um, for our testing scores, for our financials, Mr. Clark, right? So we, uh, we need that attendance. Uh, I know Ms. Barkley is watching that closely. So, um, but let's, let's try to figure out creative ways to uh, keep kids in the classroom happy and healthy and, uh, and maybe keep all of our coworkers there too. So that's all I've got. Ms. Farrell. Okay, I agree with what uh, Mr. Klein just said. As a teacher, I always felt like the best learning months of the year was January, February, and March. And if we have to miss for school, or if we hit our snow, or if we have to miss for diseases, you know, I felt like that that's when the <coughs> students really get going is, are those three months. So. I hope we don't have to miss many days for snow. I'm sorry, kids out there, but I don't think we need to miss any. So uh, I just have a few things uh, I want to say uh, to Dr. Hicks and Dr. Sugg. The midday mixer was wonderful that we had with the chamber. Uh, I thought of all of them that I, I had been to, it was better attended than uh, most of them. I mean, usually they asked me because they had food out there and I said, well, usually there's only about 25 or 30, but we had probably 70 something people there. So it was a, it was a big success. And uh, I think it was an eye opener for most of the people in the chamber. Uh, I think that uh, it got them to thinking about Shelby County Public Schools. Uh, another thing I met, Congratulations, West Middle, on the gifted. You know, I'm a big gifted person since that's how I ended my career was teaching gifted, so I'm real proud of them for that. Uh, I met with a, a young lady, Danielle Nation, and uh, that's at East Middle. They, uh, Mrs. Orange from East Middle, the librarian, had called me and she wanted me to meet with her because this little girl is in real interested in forensics. And I thought, well, you know, I just know somebody personally that's in forensics, you know, I married to one. But I met with her and it was, she was very interesting and very uh, nice young lady. And uh, I hope she continues to, to get into that career. And I'm gonna, uh, I gave her my husband's uh, email address so that she can c write him questions or we may even go <coughs> over there and let her talk to him one day. I couldn't tell her a whole lot, just a little bit. So that was good. Um, and I think, oh, and I'm so glad I went over to West Middle this week to buy, uh, I guess it's Papa John's or Domino's, Domino's. Domino's. Domino's pizza things i i saw his plea i saw his plea on fate on the internet and his and i thought you know they're having trouble selling those so i went over there to buy them. but i'm glad i did because when i walked in i thought that they were having a fire drill because they were over there at the red box and i said are you all having a fire drill no this is our intercom system so I am so glad that that's on the unmet needs and that is something we definitely, definitely need is to get that intercom system fixed because, well, <laughs> they have to walk across the room to get to the red box. So there you go. He's got to work his brain. Oh, that's, that's right. So, and also, Yeah, I walked in and they all, you know, I thought, I said, are you all having a fire drill? But <laughs> they said no. Uh, and I hope they get new carpet in the band room. I saw that, it's not pretty. So I hope they do get that. And I think uh, they said that that was on the list too. So that's, is it on the list? Good. Tell him I took care of him other than those coupons I bought. So that's all. Thank you all for making us feel real special. You know, we like to feel special and uh
all the schools did, and we really appreciate it. Mr. Phillips? I'd just like to thank everybody for the gifts tonight, <clears throat> all the kind words that we get. This has been a rough year. We have probably had more attendance from parents about face masks and what my doctor said, and, and everywhere you went, you was sort of a hot topic. Hope this would be a lot gentler year that we don't have to experience that much controversy from our public. That's part of the game. We represent the public's taxpayers' money, and we got to try to do the best with it. So, and I just thank for the opportunity to be at and serve y'all one more year. And I did get to go to the vocational school, and Mrs. Green took me through there. And I left a project for the students to work on, and as much equipment as I got broke down at the farm, I think I can keep them in business for quite a while, Andrew. So, but uh, it's nice to talk to the welding instructor, and he looked at me as I left. Uh, the old guy that he was talking to taught that class about 40 years ago. So he said, how can he still be around? But he was still wondering about it, but the kids look really neat in their uniforms and everything, and it just, it's amazing how many girls that are doing welding now and liking it, you know, just, but it's a, it's a real good opportunity for, we never use it to, to have that skill. JJ knows all about it, don't you, baby? <laughs> Next. <laughs> okay. Director. Yeah, I want to, one, thank all the support that we get from our principals and our staff and all that because we can't really be effective board members unless we have you all support. And I want to thank our student board members because each year they seem to be more open with us and try to keep us in track, on track from the student's perspective because a lot of times we think from the adult perspective and all of that, but the students let us know what we need to be thinking about what's going on at their school. And uh, I've been working with the Lincoln alumni and the NAACP, and we'll have some information for scholarships uh, that we need to get to the schools. But that's what we're doing because the Shelby County has a Lincoln alumni chapter, and because Lincoln Institute was here in Shelby County, we've got scholarship money to give out, and um, it will go to any student or any student that has had a parent, a relative, or whatever uh, that has gone to Lincoln Institute to get that, and we've got the NAACP scholarship funds too. But that's all I've done. Just thank everybody for the support that they've given us. Abigail? Um, I wanna say happy Board Appreciation Month to all of you all. It's such an honor of being able to sit up here with you all and get to experience something brand new this year. And thank you all for the cards and the gifts. <laughs> um, Collins and County swim team had senior night last night and it was a very special ceremony. And Collins' Student Voice Club has some upcoming beautification projects of the school, um, specializing in the bathrooms and making it a better place to be. And that's all. Um, happy Board Appreciation Month. Um, and thank you to all the schools for all the wonderful things that led to my cards. I had one that said, thank you for help teaching. I was like, you're welcome. <laughs> 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 I don't do that, but you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Um, so that's really it. I don't really have anything. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have anything else to say? No. Okay. Last night I went to see the Shelby Stars play again last night at Cal. They didn't win, but that's okay. Thank you to all the students, school, staff, for all the love and the kindness that you've shown. Thank you so much. We appreciate it as a board collectively. Thanks. So that takes us to informational reports. Nutrition and wellness report 2022. Ms. Wendy Greenwell.
Okay, so um, I don't know if I, is there a little frog there? Okay, okay. I have a copy of the report and I think you all probably have a copy. So it's actually a report from last school year, the 21-22 school year. Um, during that school year, we were, um, you were under a SSO program, which is Seamless Summer um, Program, that we fed all the students for free. And if you're gonna ask me how many milks we served, it was uh, however many lunches or meals we served. <laughs> Um, so the 1,287,634 lunches and breakfasts that we served all had milk because they required it. <laughs> so, um, but the report just basically tells um, the meals that we served last year, what we offer in our meals, the summer program that is offered and what is offered for breakfast and lunch for that, and then the physical activity at the school um, level and what was able to be done last year with coming back to school and everything. So um, they have different all programs going on at all the different schools, but we met as a committee um, this coming year. Um, we're gonna serve meals to all students, meeting all health and safety regulations. We have increased um, the nutrition education and. I actually talked to Tracy earlier today and we're gonna work on maybe doing a, some kind of a newsletter um, for um, actually um, adults, so for faculty and stuff. So we're gonna try and do a newsletter for some health education and that sort of thing. So her and I are gonna get together on that. Um, and we're gonna always, always offer fresh fruits and vegetables during lunch and encourage physical activity through fun activities. Um, but also this school year, we're, we got together as a wellness committee already once, and then we'll get together again in a couple of months um, to discuss just the wellness policy and some things that we would like to see happen through the district. That is about it, so. Does anyone have any questions? I do, I, I have some comments. Um, I, my thought about eating, <laughs> which I like to eat, but you know, when you go into these schools, you see so much of the food being thrown away. And I know Michelle Obama's probably <laughs> dying now, but you know, I don't understand why we don't serve food that kids like, like pizza. I know we do sometimes, but broccoli, they're not gonna eat broccoli. <laughs> well, they, they're not gonna eat the, they'll eat the, flower part, but they're not going to eat what we oh. buy. I know. Well, it, it, I, I just don't understand, you know, <laughs> if we want to get kids to eat, and we know there's a lot of kids, not just, I'm not talking about our oh, county yeah. specifically, but I'm talking about in general. You know, kids, they're funny about eating, and we're so concerned about some of them not getting enough food, and school's the only place they're getting it. But if you're not serving food that they like, like hot dogs and hamburgers and soup and chicken and, you know, but you're, set, you're doing all this other, I don't understand why. And you see them throwing it away. That, that bothers me too, is the waste that we have. Well, we're all, always gonna have waste. It's just part of it. But how I work my menus and I work with the managers on it and we got together last week and worked on them for next year is we tweak them as we go. And what I have learned working with kids and food is that you can't make them eat things, but we can encourage them to eat them. And I know I have several people that do not like peas on the menu, but I want to present peas to the students every time we can, just because they never see those. And they have done studies, um, kids need to see up to 10 times something before they'll even try it. And if it's never presented to them, and I know sometimes it goes in the trash, I get that, but it's never presented to them, they will never try it. And so I feel like we are here to teach them things, and this is, you know, our way of getting them to learn edu or educated decisions on food. And if it's never presented to them, they never get the opportunity to try it. I am big on, yes, we serve them the things they like, but we also have to serve the things that they may not know about. So 
Our menus are made up based on federal regulations, but I try to work it into where we can. When I was a manager, that's how I did my stuff. I slowly got them to try it. I didn't make them eat anything, because you can't make any money do anything, but especially with food. So I get what you're saying, and I know we see waste, but we'll see a lot less waste as we keep going, keep pushing through. So I, the elementary is serve, and I'm going to leave them serve next year too. And that is where they get presented with everything. And it's, you know, it's a way for them to see everything. They need to see opportunity. It's not done at home too much anymore. And so those types of things need to be presented to them. It's mandated, but it's also important that we do it. So, and I get it. I know there's things wasted, and we're trying to work around those and make them where they're appetizing and more for them. But they also will try them as we keep pushing, I think, through. So. And I wasn't specifically talking about oh, here yeah, in I general. Know. I'm talking about nationwide. I mean, I just, we talk, well, especially during the pandemic of how, you know, we wanted to feed these children that were at home. Well, there, there are a lot of children that this is the only meal they get. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's just a real sad thing. I did have a lot of phone calls during the pandemic from parents that received the food that we were sending home. They called me to tell me that they were shocked at the food they were getting because it was much better than they thought it would, would be. And then they also were shocked at how much the students ate because they had, were under the impression they were not eating um, and liking school food. That's just the impression they had. But when they got it to their house and the students saw familiar things, they knew what they were getting and they were very happy to have that. <laughs> so we learned a lot through the pandemic. For sure. So you have to deal with children getting more fast food. Mm. So a lot of the things that, as I look at what we have on here, it's really good. But with the fast pace everybody's going, just give them, mm -hmm. you know, what they like, mm -hmm. and you're not introducing any good health right. stuff, or the hot right. dogs and. The amount of sodium that's in a lot of things is just not good for them. Right, and we're back under the sodium restrictions now. Yeah. They put that back into play. So we are at a, in a very tight thing to get them to take things. Um, but we're working on it, and I think um, I, I love doing that. That's kind of my thing, just to see the improvements as we go. And we are, and we'll get better at what we're doing, and then we'll get better at. Um, teaching and encouraging the students to try and do things. And I, I mean, I know it looks bad sometimes, but we're working on food and we're working on cooking. <laughs> so the better we get, the better they'll eat. So One of those things, one of the things that you introduced this year that the kids really did like was corn on the cob. Many of them had <laughs> never seen corn on the cob and the elementary level, it was fun to watch. Mm -hmm. They were actually having to teach them how to eat corn on the cob. So, Well, I've brought in several things that the managers said they would not touch, and I'm like, they will eat it. You'll be surprised. And so we are working on that. It's just a communication and generational thing, too, a little bit sometimes. Like so, what? Give me an example. Um, we started, we did a, we do a cheesy chicken, um, a which what? the what cheesy chicken. It's oh, cheesy chicken and rice, and the kids get it at all the Hispanic, you know, the Mexican restaurants is kind of their go-to meal, and I put it on the menu, and they're like, they're not going to take it, and every time we make it, they have to make more. So <laughs> the kids, they, they like stuff, you know, so. Are the menus published like they used to be, sometimes in the papers? They're on the website, okay. uh -huh, and I'm actually working on getting a, an, an app. Um, with a company so that we'll have monthly rotating and the parents will be able to have an app with it and it'll have all the nutritionals and stuff on there and it'll be inter kind of an interactive um, thing that I'm working and on. And we so. don't all eat the same thing at each school. Well we're basically the same but we change we add to it as they get older. So my, the elementaries have the bases, and then the middle has a little bit more, and then the high schools have a little bit more. So that way I can do my commodities, and it's a little easier to 
manipulate those numbers too. I remember used to at Wright Elementary uh, where I began to put on weight, let's put it that way because they were so good, <laughs> they were such good cooks, but they would let the students sometimes plan like fifth grade, one class would plan the menu for that week or that day or something. I yeah. thought that was pretty neat. I like that. Let's, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Greenwell. Uh, <clears throat> got one more thing. Uh, in other words, I see you were given the eight ounces of serving of 1% milk. The whole Northeast is voting on whole milk. We're needing to get protein into children, either through beef, peanut butter, or do the milk program. I didn't get to go. I think you went with the thing with Dairy Alliance mm -hmm. with Miss Judy White. Yes. I let you down. I didn't get. We had a, <laughs> okay. we had a board meeting that night. Somehow you did. Or, you had a board or, meeting. I didn't yep. want to miss the board meeting, but her Miss Jones has got a lot of programs for school lunches, and one of the things that Dr. Sugg and I have talked about, and you you know about it, is is the milk machine like you got at Henry County High School. It's something that we're trying to work on somehow or another, getting some of these Kentucky uh, dollars that they have each year on the tobacco settlement fund. I'm going to get, we're going to get one at each high school. They just, they didn't have any machines. They were out of the machines. So we are working on getting, I would like to have them at both high schools. But we can't do whole milk. 1% is the highest I can go with the federal regulations. They won't let us do it. I, I'm with you. I agree with you. If you're going to drink milk, drink whole. But yes. It takes a legislative north to finally set, you know, they set the standard. They, they got whole milk now. Yeah. In other words, 1% is probably one of the most watered down milk products that you can get. And it knocks the flavor out of it. And in other words, if you ever drink whole milk for a while, you, you, you just, you know, you can't believe the difference in the body and the taste of everything. Of it. The flavor stays with it a lot better. Yes. But uh, thank you for the job you're doing, and I hope that the Farm Bill in Washington gets approved so we can still get the funding right now we've got for the school lunch program. And without that, I don't know how we'd feed all these children anyhow. We've got, we've got to have that. In yes. The program. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Greenwell. Yeah. Thank you. Next, report of human resource actions. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, next would be the school financials, December 2022. Does anyone have any questions? That takes us to board action items. <coughs> A, consider approval for monthly financial reports, December 2022. Do I hear a motion? So I make moved. a motion. I'll second. Ms. Frills made the motion. Andrew seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Say aye. 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 B, consider approval for claims and authorization. Superintendent to sign necessary, necessary documents. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I second. Andrew made the motion, Ms. Frill seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 C, consider approval for revised BG1 for BG22-383 West Middle Dishwasher Project, approve bid for West Middle Dishwasher Project and authorize superintendent to execute the final AIA contract and partner agreement pending approval of the Kentucky Department of Education. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Jackson approved. Mr. Phillips second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 That takes us to, Z, to D. Consider approval of the revised BG1 for the BG22-385 Painted Stone Elementary Dishwasher Project approved bid for the Painted Stone Elementary Dishwasher Project and authorized superintendent to execute the final AIA contact, contract and partner agreement pending approval of the Kentucky Department of Education. Do I hear a motion? So moved. I second. Andrew made the motion. Ms. Frill seconded. 
When we call a state contract, and we get these. This grocery is cheaper. The more you buy, the cheaper it is. Does, do we be able to get this off state contract? No, sir. It was done through an open bid. So we did put this out the bid. We only had one bidder, which is CNT Design. CNT uh, is a local company here, but uh, they've done probably 95% of our kitchen work for the past. Well, I've been here 17 years, and that's really about how long people we've worked with. Okay, did you put a, a brand in that you can get parts for? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. That's all Ho the Ho Hobart is the brand name. Hobart? Okay. Mm-hmm. Any other, any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. That takes us to three consent agenda items. Does anyone have any items to be pulled for further discussion? I make a motion to approve consent agenda items as presented. Seconded. Andrew made the no motion. Mr. Phillips, second. Does anyone have any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Four other, five adjournment. I make a motion to adjourn. I second. second it. Andrew made the motion. Mr. Phillips, second. No, I think I did. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Andrew made the motion. And Ms. Second. Spreel seconded it. Does anyone have any, yeah. feel like we shouldn't close the meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. <laughs> meeting is adjourned. That, all that reading, that's a mouthful. That was the dishwasher, <laughs> the dishwasher, I said dishwasher, yeah. Oh, wait till you get all those leaves in the morning. Yeah.